This is LA's Live from Los Angeles, welcome to the Dr. Aaron Show. We're all about manifestation, transformation, and breakthroughs. It's time to claim your birthright of prosperity, vitality, and love. So grab your tea or coffee because together we're awakening the world. May you live your truth. Live from Los Angeles, we come together each day to know the truth, live on spiritual principles, align with universal law, and break through all limited beliefs within our subconscious mind and claim our birthright of prosperity, financial freedom, money, wealth, vitality, relationships, and a divine life. We also come together in community, in Soul Society, and New Thought Global. We truly believe that when somebody awakens, they have a gift and message to bring to the world, and together we are awakening the world. So today we are going to be talking about the universal law of compensation. This is a series. We're on number 21 of 52, the law of compensation. Which brings me, of course, to the famous, famous um, talk by Ralph Waldo Emerson, or rather a dissertation. He says, the whole of what we know is a system of compensations. Ever defect in one manner is made up of another. Every suffering is rewarded. Every sacrifice is made up. Every debt is paid. So Ralph Waldo Emerson so he talks in this dissertation, and he talks about, he was, he was living in a time, you have to understand, okay, here he is in a time in a, a very prestigious world, and his father, I think his father was, he was a minister, um, and he basically was in this orthodox environment. And he basically talks about how he, he comes to this sermon, he's in church one day, and he's listening to the preacher, and the preacher basically is totally orthodox. He and he basically talks from a doctrine that's in the last judgment of the Bible. And he basically says that the wicked are successful, that the good are miserable, and then urged for reason that from the scripture that compensation to be made both parties in the next life. That, that basically we need to suffer. If you're a good person, you need to suffer in this life, serve and sacrifice, and that you will be, you know, you will get yours, if you will, in heaven, on, you know, after life. And he sat there in this church at this sermon thinking, what, what are we teaching here? He felt like there was a part of the culture that was beginning to wake up. They were beginning to realize that they didn't need to go into church to think there was a man in the sky, that it was a relationship, and that there was heaven on earth right here, right now. And he realized as he was sitting in this congregation that no one seemed to be taking offense, that he realized that this was the, this was the doctrine of the times, that if you, you know, that you basically, if you're sinning now, you get to reap in this world of whatever, and if you are a good person, that you have to wait for afterlife. You sin now, we shall sin by and by. We would sin now if we could, not being successful. We expect our reverence tomorrow. So, so this is the deal. Okay, so the law of compensation. What is the law of compensation? It's basically, yes, we reap what we sow. And what goes around comes around in a way, but we're talking about compensation, okay? So etymology breaks it down. It's the act of compensating. Basically, it's a balancing. So if you think about it, it's like a scale. Like, remember those scales? Like, on one side, you put one thing on, and the other side to balance it out to realize how much it weighs. And these scales came about in, you know, way, way back in time when they needed to do trade, right? So they would put a, a stone that weighed X amount, and then they would know whether they were, you know, weighing gold or whether they were weighing sand or whatever, they would understand how much it weighs, okay? But they would balance it out. Those are scales, right? The universe balances out right now, right here, instantaneously. Spiritually, there is no future, right? There is no past. There is no life after life. There is only now and there is only life. And everything in the 3D realm, everything here is an outpicture of what's going on in a conscious perspective right now. So how does this relate? 
if you're somebody and you're listening to this podcast, you generally are our listenership and our tribe and our community and everything are people who are love spirituality. They love spirituality and they have generally had a spiritual calling to do something even in their business. They either bring their spiritual principles into the, the business they already have, their family that they have, they're soulpreneurs, they are soul-based business owners, they are spiritual coaches, they are practitioners, ministers, doctors of the divinity, Okay. And let me tell you that I am I, one of the one of my core commitments to this community is because I used to be in spiritual centers and I would watch my friends that were so wealthy and rich in their spiritual nature be broke in their finances. And I was like this doesn't add up. Something doesn't add up here. How can they know the riches of divinity, the riches of who they are? and not claim it in all areas of their life. Which brings me to um, Ram Dass, one of my favorite speakers all time. And he gives a great talk where he said he was in India, and he was walking down the street. He had been, you know, again, from a very prestigious um, culture here back in America. And um, he was walking down the street, and he was wa- watching all the, all the people who were beggars, And he saw this woman on the street and she was begging and she was, you know, obviously homeless. And, and she, and he kind of looked into her eyes and she kind of looked back at him. And he realized in that moment he was, she was looking at him kind of like having compassion towards him. He had, she had this look on her face, like this poor American boy that is so spiritually bankrupt How poor is he? And so he realized in that moment that our perception and ideals of what it means to be rich are relative. And that from a spiritual perspective, we know anyone who's touched on divine, anybody that's touched in the the sacred home of heaven of the kingdom within, the godliness, the heaven on earth that is in the temple within, understands that richness, understands that nothing in this world, nothing of the material world can even begin to touch on that wealth, on that compensation. And so we recognize, yes, that that, that we have to first understand true wealth, true wealth to even be able to measure on the scale of what wealth is. But we also recognize through the law of cause and effect and the correlation and what we're doing here right now, which is talking about the compensation, the balancing, that if we are spiritual leaders, that we are decided to make money in our spiritual work, that, we, that, that it is a, a giving of how we help others in their value will be reflected back and equaled out equally. It may not come from the same person. It may not come from the same place. It may not come in in the form of money. But what we have to recognize is that there is a law of this universe that works with such precision. So in your heart and heart, you know, understanding and, and really getting clear, I want you to just take a deep breath in for a moment. And I want you to think about what you truly desire in the realm of, of your compensation. Do you need to have, you know, more money for what? For more food, for more clothes, for health care, for what is it that you need money for? What is it that you truly desire in your prosperity and to be compensated for? Okay. And one of the greatest myths that I want to debunk in our industry, in our industry of people who have decided I am handing my life over, this is my calling, my mission, and I desire to make this into my actual career and make this where I make money is doing my spiritual work, knowing that you have spiritual gifts that it's time to monetize, okay? And the myth is this. The myth is, or rather what I hear people say over and over again, I would do this for free. I would do I love this so much what I do in my spiritual work that I would do it for free. And that is awesome. Congratulations for finding something that you love so much that you would do it for free. But what I want to break through in our industry is recognizing that I hear this over and over. 
Like I'm in coaching groups, whether it be group coaching, one-on-one, whatever. And this is the, this is the gap. This is the, this is the limited belief. This is what is holding people back. It's not getting that if they truly cared about making the impact that they want to make, they would also recognize that money equals power. Money equals is a signification of, of energy. Okay. Money equals choice. Money equals freedom. Money means that you, it is an exchange of energy. So imagine you have all the energy of the entire universe or, or all the, all, all the money because money is, is worthless, you guys, right? Money's worthless. It's a man made concept of something that's backed by nothing it is an illusion, a delusion. It is nothing, but it is an agreement. It is agreement to say this money is worth X amount of effort. So we have to understand and recognize that if we truly want to make an impact by delivering our spiritual gifts, by delivering truth and freeing people at whatever level and helping them have prosperous lives in their relationships and their vitality and their money and all the above, we have to also recognize that money is God as well, right? Money is, if you don't see God in all, you don't see God at all, right? So today, as we recognize the universal law of compensation, I want you to realize that wherever you are putting on one side of the scale, it is always balanced out through this law. It has to be equally, obviously, right? That's why so many of us are so rich with our ethereal wealth, with our connection with divine, with our connection with source. It is so balanced out. We feel immensely whatever whatever i when i go into meditation and prayer i get back exponentially so much more than what i put into it it is not even it, it is way beyond those scales right but here out in this world and the reason why we're going through this 52 series of universal law is to understand this realm right to understand how we get in, a, in alignment with universal law so that we can so that we can create harmony and create the abundance that we want in this realm there's rules and regulations and things like gravity in this world and there is the law of compensation so the law of compensation states that life is an energy exchange each person is compensated in a like manner to how they contribute There is an identical correlation in the amount of value you give to the value that you receive. There is also an equal atonement to the expense of your action. This is natural amending mechanism. It's a process of redemption, bringing balance to order. So you have to ask yourself, and I ask myself all the time, if we see somebody that is wealthy in the eyes of what maybe the Western world considers wealthy, they have a Ferrari, a fancy home on the beach. They have, they're in the White House, right? The president may have the White House, but what has he given up? His peace? So you have to ask yourself, what are you willing to sacrifice to get those things, right? And as we step into our spiritual alignment and working for the highest good, we have to recognize that it's going to be compensated exponentially, exponentially. So if you are a someone beginning to hand your life over to your career in spiritual work, you have to live in faith. This is a universal law of faith that knows that wherever you are helping somebody out there in the world through your business, because what we do in society when, when some of the girls and a few guys get trained as spiritual coaches, we do a lot of pro bonos. And the reason why we do that, because some, some coaches would be like, no, you should have them get money right away. Well, that's fine. And or also, you can begin to do pro bono so that you are embodying the work. And we have to understand that as you help others transform and be able to you know, rise in their business, we it has to come back. It has to be reflected back exactly with such precision so today i invite you to claim your birthright of prosperity if that's what you truly want if you want to be compensated in the realm of doing spiritual work and helping somebody awaken and getting more and more transcend yourself go for it if you want to 
to have more prosperity in cash coming in, then give cash. If you want to help others in in understanding and growing their prosperity in their business, it has to be reflected back in your business of being compensated in your business. This is the balancing act of the world. This is the balancing act of how universal law works. There is such precision, such precision, such precision. And so let's take a deep breath in. And as in Ralph Waldo Emerson said so eloquently, that there is this this thing, polarity, we have to recognize or action and reaction. We meet in every part of nature, in darkness and in light and in heat and cold, in the ebb and flow of waters, in male and female, in the inspiration and expiration of plants and animals, in the equation of quantity and the quality of the fluids of the animal body, in the systole and the diastole of the heart, in the undulations of fluids and in the sound and in the centrifugal and the centripetal, gravity and electricity, galvanism and chemical affinity, superinduced magnetism at the end of the needle. The opposite magnetism takes place at the other end. If the south attracts, the north repels. To empty here, you must condense there. An inequivocable dualism dissects nature so that the each thing is a half and suggests another thing to make it whole as spirit matter thing as a half and suggests another thing that makes the whole as spirit matter man woman odd even subjective objective in outer upper under notion rest ye nay i know this for certain i know this with absolute certainty that there is a law of this universe that works with such precision that it is law it is law And as you claim your birthright today, as you say, I help others, I give money. That's why we say tithing, right? Tithing is reflected back exponentially. That is the law of compensation, okay? Wherever you help others gain value in their life, learn how to make money, you also will have that reflected in your life. This is the law of compensated. What you give, you will reap. What you sow, so shall you reap. I know for certain it is time. It is time to move back or past the orthodox of saying that we cannot, that we must suffer, that we only get heaven in the next life. And I say, hell no to that. Heaven on earth is right here. Prosperity is now. And I claim this for this community. I claim this for all spiritual practitioners, light workers, healers, everybody that is working for the highest good to bring truth here right now. It is done in my mind as together we say, and so it is. Okay, you guys, have a beautiful day. And knowing this law, you are worth more than all the gold on this planet. It is time to claim your birthright of prosperity. So have at it. May you live your truth. Have a beautiful day. Thank you for tuning in to Soul Society and Dr. Aaron Podcast. If you've had a calling to be a spiritual leader or coach, you can go to soulsociety.com and check out our free training. If you've received value here, I would love it if you take a moment and give a five-star review. In exchange, I have a ton of free gifts for you. Grab your free awakening book, 40 guided meditations and digital manifesting masterclass. I also have a free money meditation and worksheet for you so you can begin to break through your scarcity mindset and claim your birthright of prosperity. You can get all of your gifts and learn about our upcoming transformational events in my bio link in both Instagram and Facebook. That's under drerin.tv, which is D-R-E-R-I-N.tv. Also, I'd love to invite you into our free private community on Facebook under groups called Society. That is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Society. That's S-O-U-L-C-I-E-T-E. Have a divine day and may you live your truth.